plan to study and retain a whole bunch of information throughout my career. So for example, I have two bachelor's degrees and a master's degree. I have about 15 certifications. Uh, I taught myself Japanese from zero as an adult, and I've taught myself at least 300K skills. I use the same strategy to learn and practice all of those different things because I feel it's the most optimal way to kind of go about learning something and retaining it long term. And that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. If you find studying boring or you're kind of forced to study topics that you, you don't really care about, so it's hard to do, or you just want to optimize the speed at which you're learning something to you know, start getting money sooner than later, this video is definitely for you. And just so you know what to expect, I'm going to cover what the actual method is itself. I'm going to talk about how I apply this to learn my 100k skills, like what I did exactly. I'm going to talk about why the method is so important for IT particularly, and we're going to cover like how you can select appropriate skills to learn in today's market. Just as a reminder, I have a whole bunch of free practice exams on my company website for CompTIA A+, Network+, Plus, Security+, Plus, CISSP, and we're building an ITIL deck as well. Also, I teach an entry-level course, entry-level hands-on course on how to get into IT as fast as possible. A bunch of people have had success with this already. I will leave a link in the description for that as well. So the method that I use to learn and maintain large amounts of information in a relatively short time period is called spaced repetition. There's a lot of applications that use spaced repetition. Um, I use Anki, which is free. Basically, the idea is it's a smart flashcard system and it will show you cards at given intervals and it will show you cards that you struggle with more frequently and the cards that you have an easier time with you'll see those less frequently so it kind of optimizes the cards that you see to help you learn stuff that you have difficulty with faster if that makes sense so getting into how to apply this to tech like working in tech because not everything we do is just rote memorization of theoretical concepts we have to practice and do labs and stuff as well so basically the way I used Anki to study for my like practical certifications like CCNA, I would make flashcards, but instead of like putting on the front, like what is NAT, like what is NAT, network address translation, and the definition on the back, I would put on the front like configure NAT or like configure network address translation. And on the back of the card would be like the full like, you know, Cisco device configurate or like the Cisco router configuration to implement NAT. So basically, I'd look at the front of the card, configure NAP, I would go to my console, like I'd connect to a router, and I would start configuring NAP, and if I was able to do it, I would count that card as a success. But if I couldn't do it, I would look at the actual implementation on the back of the card, and I would do it a few times to make sure I could do it, and then I would count the card as a failure, and doing that would cause me to see the card sooner rather than later, if that makes sense. I'd have a whole bunch of cards like this, like configure NAT, configure OSCP, configure DHCP, configure SSH, and I would make sure that I, I could like do the actual config on the Cisco command line before saying like, you know, pass for the card. And if I failed it, I would force myself to like re-implement it a couple times. And this made me learn like Cisco command line super, super fast. You can also do the exact same thing for programming. And it doesn't have to be really complicated topics either. You can have the front of the card be something like um, implement a while loop. And on the back of the card, it can have the actual like, you know, implementation in Python or whatever it is for the for loop or the while loop or the if else statement. And if you, you know, successfully do them, you can mark the card as like good, easy or whatever. If you fail it, mark the card as again, just make sure you can implement it and like do it a couple times. And it forces you to kind of take that space repetition theory and like apply it to actually like doing physical configurations and like doing physical labs. This is really crazy and it, it really helps a lot. And then this is kind of just a fun graph that Anki produced when I was studying data structures and algorithms almost every day. The green portion is when I got stuff wrong and I forget the difference between the red and the orange, but it's probably when I failed some algorithm in some capacity, but yeah, it's just kind of fun to look at. And for me personally, my 100K skills that I really use this methodology on, uh, the first one is SCCM administration. It's called something else now. Um, people still use SCCM everywhere, like System Center Configuration Manager. Basically, like I built the whole like SCCM environment from scratch probably like 20 times or something. And I got so good at it. I totally like understood everything, not everything, but most of what was going on and it's complicated. So I was able to get jobs like relatively low effort um, after doing that. Um, the second 
100k skill I learned was cybersecurity, like security operations and GRC. GRC, governance, risk and compliance is really theory heavy. Cybersecurity operations, um, I just practiced labs like over and over and over again and until I just got like a really good understanding of what I was doing. Programming and automation, just like I talked about before, I just practiced data structure and algorithms like so many times with the spaced repetition method with Anki. And that is like another skill that I can use to get, you know, 100K plus jobs with. So getting into why this is so important in IT, we kind of deal with a lot of different concepts and a lot of interconnecting systems. And basically, if you look at this graph or this like, I don't know, the graphic that I made, the very first time you do something or implement something, so like you set up Active Directory the very first time, you're gonna have like a pretty superficial understanding of it because you did so many things and you don't really know what like half of those things are. Maybe you knew what some of them were, but you don't you don't really know. You have like a superficial understanding of it. And then the second time you implement it, you kind of pick up on a bit more stuff. Even though you're doing the same thing, you kind of pick up a bit more. And like the third and the fourth and the fifth time you do it, you start to really like see the nuance of stuff and understand like the different settings of things. And it just, it just really helps your understanding. And if you take this like graph and apply it to like a bunch of different skills, then you kind of have a, you'll kind of have an overlap and you can see where different stuff starts to interconnect and it just makes more sense. Like the more times you implement something, the better you understand it, the more nuance you'll have around that topic, and it will just make more sense and it'll make it easier for you to see the connections between different topics, if that makes sense. So I can talk about this a bit. I'll give like a, a solid example, maybe uh, in my cybersecurity course. Basically, we have like one giant lab in there, and I, I always tell people to do it multiple times because we're doing so many things in that lab. Basically, we, we set up a um, bunch of virtual machines. We set up like a SQL database inside one of them. We set up a SIM from scratch. We like collect logs from like all of those different devices, put them into a central log repository. We set up querying and like expose everything to the internet. It's just like kind of a lot, right? But that, that lab in itself is like a 100K skill, right? If you were to do that lab like five or 10 times or something, you're going to have such a, a strong understanding at least of how azure works and how like security operations might work and like incident response and how log aggregation works the more times you do it like a lot of stuff is just going to start making sense and because the lab has so many different topics in it you can kind of imagine this little bubble um, for all of those different topics and each time you do it you kind of have like a more nuanced understanding of that topic and then if you do you know the lab 10 times right you're gonna really have like a good understanding of how everything works together and how they're in interconnected and everything and doing this makes it extremely easy to talk about something when you're actually in an interview in, in front of somebody when you've done it so many times it's it's so so useful and this is what i do and like what i've done to learn my 100k skills so getting into how to select which skills to practice this with there's going to be kind of two methods the first method of course this is exactly why i made both my it course and the cybersecurity course it course entry level cybersecurity course mid level and Basically, you can just do the lab portion many times, like four or five, six, seven times. Just do those over and over again. And if you want to do it for free, actually collected 100 different IT jobs from Indeed with their respective uh, titles and job descriptions. And I collected 100 different cybersecurity jobs from Indeed with their respective uh, titles and job descriptions. And I used ChatGPT to build these resumes to like the make the best kind of make the best possible resume based on those job descriptions so basically it gathered like all the different te technologies and stuff that was listed out in the jobs and then put them on the resume so if you kind of look at these resumes you can kind of get an idea of what's kind of like quote unquote popular or what employers are looking for these days oh also the practice questions i mentioned earlier like a plus security plus etc all of those come with like an optional anki deck version of them so you can use those to study for the exam using space repetition in anki for free so definitely check those out don't forget to check out the entry level IT course and cybersecurity course. I'll put links to like all the resumes and stuff I talked about in the description. And yeah, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.